In our last video on active filters, we already discussed some basics and first order active filter circuits. These filters are called active because they contain active components such as operational amplifiers and offer the great advantage that they can amplify signals in addition to filtering them. If you have somehow missed our previous videos on this topic, we recommend you to watch them first. You will find the corresponding links in the video description. In this video, we will dive deeper into the world of active filters. In addition to various second and higher order filter circuits, we will also look at the transfer function and the design of such filters. Let's start where we left off in our last video on this topic. An active first order filter typically consists of an RC element and an operational amplifier. In this case, it is an active first order low pass filter with gain. Looking at the body plot of this circuit, we see that the attenuation that occurs after the cutoff frequency has a value of 20 dB per decade. If we want to achieve a steeper attenuation, we have to increase the order of our filter. In order to do this, we simply add another RC element to our circuit. The filter circuit we built with this is called a cell and key filter. These filters, together with the multiple feedback filters, which we will hear about more later, are among the most common active filters of higher order. To understand how such filter circuits can be designed, let's first look at their transfer function. We see a formula that consists of the gain set by the non-inverting amplifier circuit and a term in the denominator which contains the coefficients a and b. The values of these coefficients define the characteristic of the filter, such as Chebyshev, Bessel or Butterworth. Their corresponding value can be found in various filter coefficient tables. Once these values are found, one can calculate the component values of all the resistors and capacitors in the actual filter circuit. This can be a very cumbersome task, which is why today filter design tools are used for this purpose, which output the corresponding component values after entering the desired characteristic. If you want to build a third order filter, you only have to extend the transfer function by one additional coefficient, or in other words, by one additional RC element. The rest of the filter design remains exactly the same as before. For filters of higher order, there are multiple ways to do this. A fourth order cell and key topology could look like this. For even higher orders, it is common to simply connect several filters of the same topology in series. The associated transfer function can be factorized according to the following principle. But enough about the transfer function. Let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages that such a cell and key filter brings with it. In general, cell and key filters are very easy to implement and as we have seen, easy to cascade for higher order filters, even if we want to cascade high and low pass stages together. Another advantage arises when we look at the body plot. Depending on the configuration of our filter, we achieve a different so-called Q factor, which indicates how high the peak around the cutoff frequency is. The advantage is that we can build an almost ideal active low pass filter by cascading several cell and key filters with different Q factors. This factor can be raised by increasing the capacitance in the positive feedback loop of our cell and key filter compared to the other capacitance, or by increasing the gain of our non inverting amplifier circuit. However, we also have to be careful when setting the Q factor. If it is too high, our filter could become unstable. 
If it is negative due to a very high gain, our system will start to oscillate. Another disadvantage of the cell and key filter is its high frequency behavior. At high frequencies, the operational amplifier behaves according to its open loop output impedance, while the capacitors behave like a short circuit. These two effects result in an increase of the transfer function in the body plot at high frequencies, which is a completely unwanted behavior. If you don't mind building a filter with an inverting amplifier, you can avoid the unwanted high frequency behavior by building multiple feedback filters as mentioned earlier. These filters together with the cell and key filters are among the most frequently used active filters of higher order. If you look at the circuit of such a multiple feedback filter, you can immediately recognize that though this filter has an adjustable gain, one component less is needed compared to the cell and key filter, which is another advantage. But before we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this circuit, let's first have a quick look at the transfer function again, which is the same as for the cell and key filter. The only change is that there are separate tables for the multiple feedback filters because the formulas for the coefficients, which are dependent on the circuit, change. Apart from its high frequency behavior, in the low pass configuration, the big advantage of this circuit is that its resonance frequency can be adjusted. Especially if a small Q factor is to be achieved, it is therefore easier to prevent the circuit from oscillating. Also, it is not so dependent on component tolerances. But in general, it has a higher noise gain due to the inverting structure. If we want to use the filters as high pass instead of low pass, we just have to swap all resistors and capacitors. For both variants, it has to be said that due to the lack of speed and the resulting low pass behavior of the operational amplifiers, they are not suitable for high pass filters after a certain point. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. After briefly recapping first-order active filters, we built a second-order cell and key filter. To understand how we can design these filters in practice, we took a closer look at their transfer function and learned what the coefficients are all about. Also, we learned about multiple feedback filters and discussed the advantages and disadvantages of both filter topologies. I'm Clara with the Institute of Electronics. I hope you've learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching.